for neighbors, and she hung a plastic bank on the wall next to the phone. For five cents a call, our friends were offered the favor of being able to make emergency calls from our kitchen. Those were extremely different times than today. Children were told that they were to be seen and not heard. Never were we to interrupt or make comments on an adult's conversation. The kitchen was the hub of activity in our house, and I spent many moments observing with mouth firmly closed, eyes wide open, and big ears tuned in as out of breath phone calls were made, nickels were dropped in the bank, and the out of breath phone calls were made in panic, crisis, and need. I was three years old, and I was learning to listen to the concerns of others. When I was 10 years old, I was frequently called upon to sit in the school secretary's desk at our small grade school to answer the phone and greet visitors on occasions when both the principal and the secretary were called away from the office at the same time. One day, two men came storming in just a few minutes after I was left alone in the office. One of them was highly agitated. His kindergarten daughter had been threatened on the school grounds by a boy with a knife. When she brought that news home, her father ran to school to have it out with the principal and intervene for his child's safety. He told me what had happened, all the while he was ranting loudly and violently to his friend about the irresponsibility of a school that would leave a child in charge. Obviously, there wasn't anything I could do for him except to assure him that those in authority would be returning before long. Even at 10 years old, I sympathized with this man's agony. He had a need to be heard. When the principal finally returned, the father clearly and quietly stated his case. And I witnessed the beginning of a calm and orderly investigation. To this day, whenever someone confronts me with a conflict, a crisis, I reflect back to the crisis of that day and the sense that when there's nothing you can do, your listening can provide an outlet for a person with a problem. For most of my adult life, I worked for the city of Los Angeles assisting general managers and department heads. You might find it interesting to know that City Hall was designed so that managers, several suites in City Hall were designed so that managers can slip out of their inner offices into the hallway while their staffs keep the media and irate citizens at bay, making excuses, future appointments, and referrals to lesser government agents long enough for the manager to exit the building. <laughs> These practices helped me to gain even more talent at listening. I took notes to gather am ammunition and insight to assist my bosses in dealing with these individuals at later times when escape would not be possible. I learned that when you listen with undivided attention and allow someone to say everything they have to say without interruption, a relationship develops simply through your attentiveness. So, following these li lessons of my life, the life for which I have no regrets, <laughs> <laughs> I've learned to Listen for the chief concerns for a need which may not be expressed in words, but which comes through in the concerns. And I've learned to listen to discover things I have in common with people so that I can speak from those relationships and make connections with them. And I'm looking forward to listening to and <coughs> making connections with all of you in the future. Thank you.